This week on Machinery PTV, our final show from the Davidsmeyer auction, we'll find out how the 1760 planter has come full circle. After working other farms, this Hart Parr returns to the original homestead, and Pete shows us the importance of personalizing used equipment up for sale. Your machinery is a serious investment, and at the heart of every farming operation. Some call it a passion. We're Machinery Peak TV, and today we'll cover everything from auction roundups to the classics to the latest trends and technology. Machinery Peak, the most trusted name in farm equipment. Machinery Peak thanks these premier sponsors for their support. Sullivan Auctioneers, let our team of professionals show you how to make your auction a success. Visit SullivanAuctioneers.com. Hey folks, welcome to Machinery Pete TV. Coming at you this week from Virginia, Illinois, population 1800. We're actually right on the edge of town here, and we're here to cover today the farm estate auction for Martin Davidsmeyer. Really clean line of equipment, not a ton of stuff, but really nice. And before we watch it sell, let's get back to the studio, catch up on the latest farm equipment news. Thanks, Pete. I'm Clinton Griffiths. A sudden cold snap in parts of the country could bring additional problems to many crops. Frost and freezing conditions hitting the northern half of the plains and parts of the upper Midwest this week. The impact, however, appears varied, but it's likely two days of cold did damage to crops from eastern and central parts of Canada's prairies, south into Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, western Nebraska, South Dakota, and into Minnesota, North Dakota. But Drew Lerner with World Weather says the damage to crops may be just a quality issue rather than impacting production. He does say the coldest temperatures in Wyoming slipped into the 20s, which likely ended the growing season for many areas. Snow, another issue with areas of the Black Hills of South Dakota seeing up to 15 inches in places. Auto giant General Motors is taking an 11% stake in electric vehicle startup Nikola. The two plan to team up on building an electric pickup truck. The Nikola Badger will be a fully electric and hydrogen fuel cell electric truck. The deal comes as GM already has electric pickups and SUVs nearing production. Now the Badger will be available in 2022, while GM's first electric trucks are expected late next year. Here's some good news for farming and agriculture. A new poll says that our industry has the most positive perception among Americans. The survey of Americans' views of business and industry was conducted by Gallup, and it shows 69% of those who responded say they have a positive view about farming and agriculture. That's the first time since Gallup started this poll 20 years ago that ag has come out on top. Now, second on the list was the grocery industry, followed by the restaurant industry and the computer industry. Now at the bottom, you find government and sports industries. That's it for news. Now let's check on some recent auction prices from around the country. And now back to Machinery P. Hey, stay tuned folks, coming up, we're gonna watch this 12 row John Deere 1760 planter cell. Penny uh, Davids Meyer bought this thing from Martin Sullivan years ago, and now we're gonna watch Sullivan Auctioneer sell it. Hey folks, I'm here with Matt Sullivan with Sullivan Auctioneers and Matt, I understand back in your dealership days, you sold this planner to Penny and Martin. I did. Uh, when I went to meet Penny about this auction, I, uh, I walked in and I said, hi Penny, I'm Matt Sullivan. She said, oh, I remember you. And uh, I said, how do you remember me? And she said, well, you sold me that planner when you were at John Deere. I went, oh my gosh, <laughs> it's a small world, isn't it? Wow. But no, it was pretty neat. Neat little story or fun to add to the auction. Yeah. How was Matt to deal with? He was really nice. I mean, we, we knew, we saw it online, you know, the way you do things now. Right. And called him up and said, come up and come. And he showed us it. It was out on a farm. So it was 
you know, he was a really good salesman. Right. <laughs> and you and Martin would go to a lot of their auctions, sell them uh, auctions? We always went, that was, that was one of our entertainments. We didn't vacation much, we went to farm sales. <laughs> well, folks, in the era of big, big, big egg, where the planters are 24, 48 rows, it's kind of fun to come watch a smaller planter sell. Now, today we got a 2004 John Deere 17, uh, 60, 12 row, 30 inch, rigid frame. Now the thing with deer on these 1760s, they made them a lot of years. So if we isolate down, the average of the last 12, 2002 to 2006 model 1760, 12 rolls, 21,161 bucks. 17,000 well, back on August 23rd, 2019, on their big consignment auction on their lot in Hamilton, Illinois, Sullivan Auctioneers sold a Case H330 True Tandem 25 foot vertical till for 28,500 bucks. Now, on today's sale, we got a 2014 model, same size, 25 feet. Here are a few more items that sold on today's sale. Machinery Pete TV brought to you by Ag Direct. For simple, fast, and flexible equipment financing, ask for Ag Direct. Your next piece of equipment is on MachineryPete.com. Search equipment from dealerships across the country to find what you're looking for. Only on MachineryPete.com.
Well, folks, I think you might want to check out our latest Machine Repeat podcast episode. Now, in every episode, we have a feature tractor. And in this last episode, we spotlighted a John Deere 4455. So, of course, really fun to talk about 4455 values over the years and spotlight some recent ones that have sold. But the real fun of this podcast episode, this latest one, was a conversation I had with Maury Sauls. Now, Maury is the president of Kloss Omaha Incorporated. Actually, for just a little bit while longer, Maury's going to be retiring. But we talked about his amazing career in the farm equipment field. Now, Maury is an engineer, and the engineering field has fascinated me. Now, you got to tie this back. My wife, Jackie, and I have two daughters, Megan and Josie. And as they were growing up, we realized we had two young daughters who loved science and math all the way through school, middle school, high school. They just loved it. Now, our oldest daughter, Megan, went on to become a high school math teacher, uh, wanted to be a teacher like her mom, just loves it. And our youngest daughter, Josie, is 26 now, and she is a chemical engineer, graduated from Purdue. Tell you what, 26 years old, this little bugger has traveled all over the world for a Fortune 500 company, loves what she does. But again, talking to Maury about the field of engineering was so fascinating because I had no idea what an engineer was. I wasn't exposed to it in our family growing up. And taking away that ambiguousness, what does an engineer do? How do they think? What amazed me was the career paths forward. Unbelievable. So a guy like Maury uh, went to work for John Deere as a young engineer. Times got tough. He actually left the industry for a time and helped build Osprey helicopters. How cool is that? So again, check out that latest Machine Repeat podcast episode, folks, wherever you get your favorite podcasts. And I tell you what, if you're a parent or a grandparent, and you have kids or grandkids that love science and math, encourage them, explore the field of engineering with them. They might wind up growing up to build the next great tractor. Welcome back to Tractor Tales, folks. This week, we're gonna head to Portland, Tennessee to check out a classic Hart Par. This 2844 was a family tractor that was sold off to work on another farm. Joe Collins shares his story of how he was able to get it back home. What we got here is a 2844 uh, Oliver Hart Par. This is late 20s tractor, uh, and it was built during the transition. Uh, Hart Par got bought out by Oliver, so it, it, from this point on, everything was called an Oliver instead of Hart Par. The thing about this tractor, this is one of the few family tractors I was able to find and get my hands on. This belonged to my great-grandfather. It was one of the first gasoline-powered tractors in this area. The thing left, uh, I think it left sometime in the 40s, and uh, it kind of bounced around. We, uh, I had a cousin that he got on the trail of it and got about halfway to it and gave up. I was fortunate enough to put some other pieces of the puzzle together and actually found it in Castellian Springs. Didn't know the man at the time, uh, uh, name, uh, he's Rick Apple. He's ended up being a great friend. He does a lot of help up here, helps us keep a lot of this stuff going. I tried to get it bought. When I told my dad about it, he didn't want to see it because he used to have to run this thing when he was nine years old. And uh, I don't reckon him and this old tractor got along too well. <laughs> Couldn't get it bought, but Rick let me bring it up here and put it in the museum. And uh, after three or four years, we finally made another deal. So it is back in the family now and uh, tickled to death to have it. Basically like it is, Rick had, Rick had rebuilt the motor and of course it, uh, it was originally on steel when it was on the farm up here and it's been put on rubber, but I've, uh, last two or three years I found the steel and we're fixing to sandblast them and put them on sometime this year, get it back on steel like it was when it was on the old family farm. Harvest time coming up folks, stay with us. Our feature item on the show today, this 2011 John Deere 9570 STS Combine, 1186 separator hours on it. This thing has been generating a lot of interest. Got equipment to sell privately but tired of scams and hassles? Visit MachineRepeat.com and click Sell Mine. MachineRepeat.com, the simple and secure way to buy and sell equipment online. Well, folks, I saw a record number of John Deere 9570 combines sold at auction last year. In fact, I saw as many last year as the two prior years combined. Now, not surprisingly, with the higher supply like that, the average auction price fell 17.5% last year to $79,442. 
previous two years it had been running in the mid 90s. But today our feature item, a low hour one, an 11 model, 1186 separator hours. Bye with confidence here today. When you go home tonight and lay your head on the pillow, you won't have to worry about what in the world you did. You just got a big old smile on your face when you head out to the field. We're not done yet. 92 pie. Now 95,000. I got a new bidder. I'm going to do 97. Did you get about 97 pie? I got 95,000. I'm going to do 97 pie. I'm going to do 95,000. I'm going to do 97 pie. 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 I'm going to you know, prices and things like that, but go, go find one with this many hours. Now $100,000. Folks, the last two years at auction, I had seen nine John Deere 9570 STS combines sold for $100,000 or more. Well, we need to make that 10, because our feature item, the 11 model, 1186 SEP hours on it, goes for 100,000 even. Well, I've been talking now for a couple years, folks, about personalizing the used equipment you have for sale, whether it's uh, at auction or privately. I tell you what, you got the perfect example of how this works. Now here's a picture of me with Larry and Angie Hatfield from Chillicothe, Ohio, back at the Louisville Farm Show back in mid-February. Now they had been at the show the previous year and heard me talk about personalizing used equipment. And actually I'd given the suggestion of getting drone video on your farm uh, planting time and harvest season. For the purpose that down the road, a year or two, whenever, you want to sell that tractor, combine, grain cart, plant, or whatever, now you have this drone video from your farm in action, very powerful. So the Hatfields had this combine for sale last month, the 2003 Case H 2366, beautiful, 2,500 SEP hours on it. They listed it for sale in our machinerypeat.com website, our new for sale by owner option. I loaded all the pictures and they sent me the drone video. So I took it, took it, made a little video, put it out on YouTube, our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and guess what? In two days, it sold to a buyer from Idaho, this guy, Gary Reynolds, who I met at the Commodity Classic Show in San Antonio. He came up and he said, Pete, I bought the combine. And he was happy as a clam. He said, I've been looking for that exact thing for a long time. Now, Larry followed up, sent me a text and said, Pete, within two days of getting that video out there, we'd sold this thing and we'd had it listed on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist for over two months with no serious inquiries. So that, folks, is why you personalize what you're selling and why you should also list it for sale with us at machinerypeat.com. Well, sure enjoyed our visit to Virginia, Illinois, folks, central part of the state here, and we're so happy to see a strong sale for Penny Davids Meyer uh, after the loss of her husband, Martin. Beautiful line of equipment, and how about that John Deere 9570 combine needing 100K? Uh, tune in next week, folks. Be back out on the road, maybe at a sale near you. Machinery Pete thanks these premier sponsors for their support. Sullivan Auctioneers, let our team of professionals show you how to make your auction a success. Visit SullivanAuctioneers.com.